Hello from the land of TV. This is King Cool. And look what I picked up when I was at uh, PAX East. For those of you who don't know what this is, this is a D7. As you can see there by the letter L written on it. L and 9. Okay, so it's not a very good D7, but whatever, it'll work. Um, here's a funny PAX East uh, story for me. It was on, uh, I recorded the Robert Koo panel, and so I uh, had a crash with some friends who I hadn't met at that point. And I crashed on the floor for about three hours, between three and six, until I woke up freezing. And I was like, hell with this, I'm just going to go downstairs and try to get some breakfast and whatever. And then I went and got into some breakfast, and I got a, uh, six, a decent breakfast, but a six dollar glass of orange juice. And I was like, hmm, six dollars for orange juice. And so I was basically waiting, ow, I kicked something. I was waiting for the, uh, uh, Lodi Radio 1 table to open up so I could grab Season 4. And as they were getting everything ready, um, I looked over and I saw the guys who were sitting next to them, because they tend to go to Bandlands. Everyone else there is a musician, except for them, basically. And uh, there was MC Frontalot. And I was like, hello, but then it slowly dawned on me that... I don't know anything else about MC Front a lot. I ain't got nothing to say. And I'm like, uh-oh. And I see he's got one of these uh, D7s there. And I'm like, is that a D7? He's like, yeah. And they were talking about how they were trying to figure out if the D7 was fair. Um, they didn't. Uh, I don't think they had much of a conclusion because I think they were trying to determine whether or not it fell. This is how it works. It has the two pentagonal sides, six and seven, but then it has five smaller, see it's shaped like a pentagon, so it'll go boop, and it'll land, and you see the one there, three, five, two, four, into whatever's facing up if it lands on one of those five sides. So they were trying to determine, I think, if, um, if it landed more on its uh, front parts, or if it landed more on those axes, but since there's more of these axes than that, I don't know how conclusive that data was. So I'm like, you know what, I do wonder if a, uh, if a D7 is fair. So here's what I'm going to do. Let me zoom out. I got this piece of paper. And I'm going to, it's hard to see from here, but I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 written on them. I'm just going to mark down what it comes up as. This is pretty much the only way to test whether or not a die is fair. Now some of you out there are probably saying, well, you're violating the law of large numbers because let's say it comes out and it has uh, one side is uh, unbalanced. How will you know if that's accurate? We're going to roll it more. Well, then how do you know if those are accurate and then you roll it more and blah? I'm sure I'm misquoting it, but, you know, it's hard to actually demonstrate whether or not this thing is fair. Now, I'm not going to record me rolling it as much as you guys might want to see a montage because that's just going to be boring. I'm going to be here for a little while doing this. So I'm going to cut back after I've rolled this thing. I'm going to roughly estimate maybe a thousand times and also this has never been rolled before I've only been turning it with my hand so all the rolls that are inside this die are still in it so in theory I will be presenting you the complete breadth of rolls that this thing has ever experienced I mean possibly someone else rolled it before I got it but I can't be responsible for that okay alright let's see how this goes and I'll cut back then <sighs> oh my god are you guys glad you didn't watch that or what because that was boring so anyway, these are my results. I've got them written down right here. Which is very strange for me, which is... Let me put them up close. As you can see, ones were actually the one that rolled the least. Uh, at only 144 times. The other ones are more even. But six and seven, well, they have... They're two of the higher ones. Um, so considering two actually has the most... I wouldn't call it, um, you know, uh, necessarily significant. Um, it is, you know, five, six and seven do have more than the other numbers except for two. So I'm going to have to probably just call this inconclusive at the moment. Though I really wonder why number one didn't, uh, I didn't roll that as many times. I even checked the die. I measured all the um, sides, and they're all the same width. Now, it might have something to do with my way of rolling, which is I would take the cup, put it in, shake it in my hand, and then tip the cup upside down onto the table. So, four. Let's add that. Um, 
to suppose they're letting the die roll, but the die sure likes to, it feels like it wants to roll as a wheel on this side. It doesn't really feel like it wants to, once it, of course, once it wobbles like that, with blah, it doesn't really want to roll. Which might mean that it wants, once it goes to a certain point, blump, it'll just go to either six or seven. Which might mean that it isn't fair. Uh, even after rolling it a thousand times, oops, I'm not going to, uh, declare it fair or unfair just yet. So, someone else out there with more scientific training in, I don't know, geometry or something will have to, uh, uh, look deeper into this. So, I guess that's it. I know sometimes science is, uh, really, uh, not interesting. I know you guys were expecting something like, yeah, it is fair. No, it's not. But, at least from what I have, it's not conclusive. So, thank you all for watching. This is King Cool, and please drive home safe.